I'm Melanie from Raw 1251 AM and I'm sitting here backstage at Limitation Assembly with um, the delightfully talented Mystery Jets. Hi. Wanna say hi? hi. Hello, how are you? Hi, doing? thank you. We've never been called that before ever. <laughs> really? Yeah. Delightful. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shame, I think you're very delightful. <laughs> Um, so you're kind of on the road right now for like the majority of October and I think you've got a couple more dates left but yeah. how has it been going so far? It's great, it really amazing, is, yeah. yeah. I yeah. think it's been one of our best tours actually. Oh um, really? Yeah, the, music, the music's been received so well, the new music and that, that's kind of what you live for as a musician so it's, it's perfect. Mm. And you're singing in a pretty cool caravan right now at the back it's of Longton. Amazing, yeah. yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. I made it myself. <laughs> what, is, what is it? How, what is it? Sort of 1950s, a kind of 50s jet stream caravan, or like what? How would you describe it? I don't know. I don't know. It definitely belongs to a lady, I think. I think it looks like Marilyn Monroe's dressing room. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's got that kind of vibe. Yeah. That is true. Um, so 2016 has been quite a busy year for you all. So you had the release of um, Curve of the Earth mm. in January. Mm. You've toured since then, you had festival season, and you've just released a new EP as well mm. with five new tracks mm. um, to the whole earth. So, of course, um, my first question is going to have to be, like, was there any significant reason why these five tracks were released on an EP rather than the LP? Well, all of the tracks on the EP were recorded and written as part of the same session as the album for Curve of the Earth. And all of the tracks on the EP, at one time or another, were contenders to go on the album, but they, for whatever reasons, they didn't quite fit. They kind of upset the balance. Um, but in spite of that, we all really felt like they were good songs and needed to be heard. So out of somewhere came the idea to do an EP. And um, it's quite cool to put out an EP soon after an album. You know, people aren't really expecting it, and it's mm. a, it's a surprise for people. So it's you know, it's it's just yeah, new stuff. I know it's all very exciting. Yeah. Um. So I should start with the album of Curve of the Earth itself. It's a pretty intriguing name. Is there um, any significant reason behind it, or what were the choices behind the name? Uh, it started off as a working title. Um, it was one of the songs that Blaine had, uh, which was called Curve of the Earth. Um, and then it was, yeah, then it became a working title and we kind of tried to think of so many other names and they didn't quite fit in. Didn't, qu didn't seem to sum up what the record was about and I think um, having Curve of the Earth allowed all the songs to have a, a home in the record. So that was it. it. It was a lot of, it took a long time to get the name. It did take a long time. But then we had the artwork as well and they kind of, the artwork and the name kind of came at the same time. Um, really randomly um, and just seemed to kind of happen. Yeah, it is really great artwork actually. I personally really love it. Um, so I find like from listening to the album it does seem, I think, definitely more lyrically a lot more kind of emotional, personal, quite nostalgic as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think obviously quite um, different from some of your previous records like with the sort of 80s kind of style of Two Doors Down and, and things like that um, so how did the journey towards that album begin and how are you hoping the audience have alluded towards it? Well it started with a false start actually um, and it started from a position where we were we were kind of a little bit in, in deep water we were slightly in trouble because we were unsigned and unpublished and we didn't we didn't have a bass player. Our original bass player, Kai, had been gone for about a year, 18 months. And although he'd been part of the previous record, he, he, he was long gone by the time we got together to do this one. So we, we had lots of sort of holes in, in the ship. And we weren't sinking, but it was definitely a, a quite a scary time. You know, we didn't quite know what was going to happen. Um, so that was the sort of beginning of it and then we headed off initially in a kind of space rock direction and we made a space rock album actually um, but it wasn't quite working and it was too slow and down tempo and basically it was too sleepy it just wasn't gonna it didn't really sort of do what we needed our album to do so we, we then wrote a bunch of new songs and somewhere along the way um, young Jack Flanagan came aboard and join the band and with his kind of enthusiasm and energy and support for the project um, it all just started to pick up momentum again and and that that sort of got us to to the album that came out in January Cover the Earth really so it was definitely quite a difficult one to make I think mm. but um, 
Yeah, I think a lot it, of time. it coalesced, it started to pick up speed and come together. Yeah. That's great. So um, honestly, I think you first released um, Telomere mm. off the album, and I was actually um, really excited about this. So I think I was saying to you earlier, I do um, biomedical science. Mm. So I found the idea actually of um, picking Telomere um, for an idea of a song, or just the name of the song, massively um, intriguing and very different. So where did yeah. that um, kind of come about? Um, well, it's Blaine's song, mm. and I think Blaine and Henry worked on the lyrics together, and it, it's really about, um, I guess it's about, sort of without wanting to sound too pretentious, it's about mortality um, and ancestry, um, and it's kind of, it, it's a sort of poetic look at life on a molecular level, you know, on a kind of cellular mm. DNA through a microscope kind of a level, and... Um, I think telomeres are the the part of the DNA that prevent aging and decay and mm -hmm. in fact they do themselves decay and as a result people are mortal and not immortal um, and it's just sort of riffing on that idea really. That's great. Yeah. Sorry I was very excited to ask about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so even more interestingly you have released actually as well a single off the EP. Um, and I mean, understandably, that is because you have released the EP and we're releasing it. But I think there were definitely probably more reasons towards that. And I think, is there any way why you felt maybe it was more appropriate to release it now and with the EP than actually um, as a, a single on the LP? Because I felt like releasing it was probably a song that was maybe more likely just to end up on the LP, if I'm correct. Right. What world is overtaking me? Yeah. Um, it nearly did, yeah. But um, it it didn't end up on the LP for good reason really and that's because it was upsetting the balance of the record and I think Curve of the Earth is, well certainly our intentions for Curve of the Earth were to make something very consistent and very, that worked as a whole, as a, as a total record and everything on the EP really, although we, we, we love all those songs, they kind of didn't quite, you know, they didn't quite marry into what, what Curve of the Earth is about. So um, I hope I've answered your question. <laughs> Probably I haven't, but... No, you had. Thank you very much. But um, also, just drawing back to the EP itself, um, so the name obviously quite clearly links um, with the LP. It seems like a kind of finishing, yeah. that's all everything. But does it also link to any um, lyrics within the EP itself? Is there any lyrical references, or is it just a final...? Well, there's a song we had that Jack wrote called The Whole Earth, which mm. is a sort of really great song. I think it's slightly unfinished, but... That there's a connection between that and obviously the title of the EP, um, but the whole earth is a couple of things. It's a kind of, it's the final look of the album because the album is just the curve and the EP is the whole. But also the whole earth is a link to one of the sources of inspiration for the album, which is a series of catalogues that were published in the 60s called the Whole Earth Catalogues, okay. that were put together by a, a guy called Stuart Brand in California. And it was like a kind of countercultural manual for living. Um, and it went on to be hugely influential and was a big inspiration for people like Steve Jobs, who, who's actually said he felt the whole Earth catalogue was a kind of early precursor of what the internet stood for and what connectivity was all about. Um, so it, it, the EP title links to that as well. Um, and those are the kind of things we were getting into when we were writing for the album. Those were the kind of things we were sifting through and reading through. Um, and funnily enough, it was it, it's material that Henry, Blaine's dad, when he was our age, was, was also very into that as well. So there's a connection between the sort of p his past and our present coming together. So it kind of felt quite kind of cool, really, you know, that he was into the same stuff that we're into. So. That is really nice. Yeah. Um, but also, since your um, debut came out, I think, about 10 years ago, so you have been going for quite a while do you feel your other previous records have really paved their way for the music that you're making today um say that again sorry sorry um so since you've been kind of been going for quite a while now um do you feel your previous records have really paved their way um for the music that you're making today yeah i think they're all they're, they're all a part of the process you know you learn something from each record and i think we try to do if we wrote a record in like the first record we wrote kind of on our own and produced it in the, our rehearsal space at the time which was on Philpott Island um, the next record 
we tried to do more in a studio and then after that we went to an even better studio and then after that we went to America and we kind of always tried to rip up the rule book and do it in a new kind of way but I feel all those different ways of doing things we've kind of found a way that really works and we've got our own studio now and we kind of we really kind of take control of the recording situation on our own so yeah I think you know all those processes have helped make Curve of the Earth a record okay yeah, that's great. And um, also, so now that was past speaking, but it was the future speaking. Um, mm. Where, how are you hoping um, the LP and the EP will take you now, or what are you hoping to achieve for everyone in the future, musically wise? Well, there's there's lots of ideas for new songs floating about, and I think after this tour, there's going to be a bit of time off, um, and I think in that time we're going to write some songs and start thinking about getting another project together and and sort of seeing seeing where we're at and where we want to go um there are also a couple of other things that we're involved in that i'm probably not allowed to talk about just yet <laughs> damn it that are <laughs> slightly more extracurricular not oh, okay, purely yeah. musical um caps has landed a part in a big hollywood film which he's gonna he's lying no, I'm <laughs> <not>. <laughs> uh, but there's other things um that we're kind of going to be looking at so th they'll there'll be more from us basically that's great to hear yeah. um so just as a final note since you will be forming a Lemonton assembly in a couple yeah. of hours which is really exciting but obviously with um this lp and the cp that's a lot of new songs to kind of work through and get through to um perform live so yeah. how is it working through these songs to get them to um perform more on like stages like this and um what are kind of your final thoughts as you're approaching the stage to um, maybe form a new song for the first time to an audience uh, usually it's just a whole bag of nerves <laughs> for me. It's like there's so much um, there's so much going on with our live stuff these days. Uh, we really want to kind of like give the record to people in a live situation, but we want to make it sound as true as it is on record. You know, true as true as it is live on record. Wait, hold on, nah, something like that. So yeah, so it takes a lot of like there's a lot of detail in the live when we when we play live. Um, it's just, for me, it's just loads to think about. It's a bloody nightmare. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it's yeah, it's just great. It's great to finally play places like this. What's really enjoyable is when you you start doing a new song, and at first it you feel like a bit unsure about it, and you're not sure whether the audience are really liking it. But after sort of playing it three or four times in a row, it really starts coming to its own, and you put some co more confidence behind it, and everyone starts to kind of know it in a different way mm. and you kind of watch it take off that's that's a really great feeling when that starts to happen and i think we've seen that mm. on some of the songs mm. from the ep and that's um that's great it's a very hopeful feeling it's a very it's a good thing when you you see your you see what you're putting in um appreciated you know so it's oh yeah definitely yeah. i can imagine mm. that's great thank you so much um taking the time it's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, nice to meet you.